Master Chef season 13 is in the books. I finally got to the end of it. Let me just say, for a show this big, this is the highest resolution of this poster I could find. And boy, it's like 200 by 250. So the gimmick this year was that they had the different regions. And it started off with a fun little skit with Joe and Gordon and her own in a diner acting, which I really liked. They split them into different groups. We're going to go through each group and all the contestants. And I'll jump around because I don't know everything in order. But we start out with the Northeast. We had Richie. He was the first one sent home from the Northeast. I liked Richie a lot. He came on in the auditions. He was a music producer. He was fired up. He seemed like a really good kid. He really produced two lousy dishes. Like one of his dishes, he just put like crumbled up graham crackers and whipped cream on it. And was like, that's a dish, right? And then the second time he made a cupcake that came out wrong. And so then he tried to lie to the judges and say it was like a home cake. There were two guys that they had wearing baseball caps that looked the same to me. So I don't know which, this was the one that went home first. Oh man, I was so sad that our friend Pervy went home so early. She is from the same town I'm from. Uh, I love this woman. I got to introduce her at an event. I'll show the clip now. Juan Sanchez, who's also a pretty critical judge. And then Joe Bastianich, who is the scariest person I have ever seen on television. <laughs> if he doesn't like your dish, he won't even taste it. He'll take it over to the trash can and then have you open the trash can for him so he can throw it away in front of you. So I'm sitting there crossing my fingers. My wife's crossing her fingers. We're saying, oh, please. I, oh, she's, she's going to do that. I thought her getting sent home on that butter chicken dish was very weird. Gordon was really like pushing over and over that she stole the thighs. She stole those thighs from Brit. Brit needed those thighs. And in a bunch of like weirdly dubbed over comments, Gordon would say, and of course, Pervy stole those thighs from you, which I don't know. The chicken looked good. The non bread did look undercooked in the middle and burned on some spots. So I, I'm not even uh, saying that she shouldn't have gone home, but I think the whole uh, stealing the thighs, your team was cooking a chicken. That's the part she got. If Bryn wanted it that bad, she has to say no. That's it. Here's Nina. I like Nina. Nina was full of personality. Seemed like a really, really good cook that was going to be there till the end, especially as you went on. Just a couple consecutive weeks, they eliminated three members of the Northeast. They had eliminated Pervy. They had eliminated Ryan with the baseball cap. And they had eliminated Richie. So now you were down to two. So I thought these two would hang around for a long time. Eventually, Nina went home. And we were left with Bryn. And I thought, well, it's going to be a four-way finale. You'll have one from each region. And Bryn... One of the best cooks out there, right? And then she gets saddled with another cook who was also very good, Colby, who we'll talk about a little later, in the wall challenge. And the wall challenge doesn't make a damn bit of sense to me. Like, we're trying to prove that they can, that they're good cooks, but now they're just, there's a wall that they put up between you and your partner, and then you and all the other people that are in the kitchen shout at the exact same time at each other, and you're trying to make dishes that look the same, even though you haven't done anything to really practice it or know what you're going to cook beforehand. So you've got to have a cook that's good, and you've got to have one that looks the same. And they're really big on that your dish must look like your partner's dish, which is a real tough thing to do when you're talking through a wall. There's multiple types of plates. There's multiple everything. And Gordon will look at it and be like, oh, this uh, has three dots. This one has two dots. And it doesn't make a lot of sense. And she had to get sent home because her partner... He cooked a dish that was not good. And you, there's a moment where they unveil the two and he goes, my dish is terrible. She goes, it's going to be all right. And then they pull the lids and she goes, actually, it's not. And I thought she was going to just deck them. Uh, but then eventually they, they hug. They seemed like they were okay. But man, that's hard to go home on that. That's Bryn. I liked a lot of the cooks from the West. This is Amanda. I think she was the very first person sent home. Uh, she was a stay-at-home mom. She was in the first episode, I believe, she gets sent home. She seemed a little bit arrogant. Uh, it's always the edit, though. So, mind you, when I'm talking about these people, I know they're regular people, but they are edited in a particular way, some of them to be villains on this show. Uh, and she was, she was edited to be a little arrogant. There were no real villains this season. I kind of like when there's a villain. I like when you got a Chrissy or a Jeff or a Christian uh, just to stir things up or 
my God, the best of them all, Ryan and Tally. If you got if you got some villains, I like it, but uh, she was probably the closest they had to one and they sent her home pretty early. I love James. James reminded me of Suba because he seemed like a real sweet guy. Everybody seemed to love James, but he worked at half speed. Like James would be like, okay, you know, you walk over. When they sent James home and he took his apron off, I was like, is this going to be a double episode <laughs> just because it's going to take him that long to go put it on his station? Oh, Lizzie from Alaska. She lasted, I think, longer than she should have. So she she did well. Madam Donut, MD. They only wanted to put MD on there, so we all thought she was a doctor. I don't think she was great with savory dishes, but really good with, with the donuts, really good with the sweet dishes, and just seemed like a fun person to have in the kitchen. And for all of her, you know, colorful hair and everything, she seemed very down to earth and very uh, not an outlandish personality, not an over the top person. She seemed not like a, a lot of drama in the kitchen. So I really liked Madame Donut. She was the one that I thought was going to win it all. This was Kennedy. And my goodness, uh, she did so well and really, really was inspiring. She made quirky, offbeat dishes, but she couldn't bake. And every time they got to any kind of a baking challenge, she struggled. And those were the ones where I was like, man, she's struggling. Then we get to the finale. And in the finale, she is so far ahead that I was like, well, this is, it's hers to lose going into the dessert round. And boy, she did. Uh, sadly, her dessert round, she brought that cake. Joe said it was like bread. And then her road doubled down on that. and was like, it's like a bagel, uh, just too dense. And it, I mean, it was something else. It was like that finale Watching Grant win was like when you watch two teams play and one is way behind and they kind of get cocky and then the other team just keeps playing hard and slowly overcomes. And it really was like David and Goliath. Like she was much better than him, but she went too far with that dish, did it wrong, spent too much time on this snow, which barely even seemed to be part of the dish in the end. And I guess overbaked or did something wrong with aerating the dough for that cake and they didn't like it, and that was it. That was what she did not get her money for. But I'll tell you, we'll get to Grant in a little bit. She said something real sweet about him at the end of the show. This is uh, where I thought I would find all my favorite cooking. All right, this is Kendall. Kendall had uh, he had baseball caps. So this is the other baseball cap guy that they, they just looked alike to me. And Kendall had an issue early on where he got saved by this immunity, where you got immunity for your whole team. And I... I didn't like that idea. I was glad they dropped the regions eventually because he got saved, shouldn't have been saved, uh, eventually did go home. But I like this guy. He seemed like a good guy. Colby was a really good baker. He made that like that thing that looked like a bunch of pancakes with apples between it or whatever, or bananas. He made some kind of weird cake. They loved it. Uh, he did well on a lot of his dishes. When he got paired up with Bryn, I remember as they were talking through stuff, I was like... Bryn, follow his lead. Don't try to lead him because he's not going to be able to follow what you're doing. And he couldn't. And that's how they got sent home. Sav, her name was Savannah, I found out. S-A-V. She was a good cook. Hung around until Hell's Kitchen. The first person in the history of television to be sent home from both MasterChef and kicked out of the Hell's Kitchen kitchen all on the same show. I thought Grant should have been sent home, by the way. Here's Reagan. So we had Kennedy... We had Reagan and we had Grant, and we came very close to getting a Kennedy Reagan Grant finale, an all president finale, which I was really rooting for, a Hall of Presidents of the Master Chef Kitchen. Uh, I liked her a lot. I, they put those wacky glasses on her. It's like me wearing the wacky glasses, but I don't think she wears them normally. Uh, I liked her style, I liked some of her cooking. She felt like one of those cooks, kind of like David Martinez. <laughs> As Gordon would say, David Martinez, where it's a cook that just gets lucky and stays in until they're way over their head. And when they got to that replication challenge where she was trying to replicate Gordon's dish, she she was not able to keep up. And I liked Reagan. Uh, went further than I expected. I was glad to see her do it. Jennifer. Now, Jennifer was all over the place. One of the first episodes, she has a top dish. One of the second or third episodes, she has a bottom dish. She was all over the place, but seemed to be a very competent cook, got all the way to the finale, and then in the finale had 
this weird moment where she was presenting her dish, Gordon was criticizing it, and then she said, I'd like you to eat them this way. Put a little bit of the beurre blanc with a little bit of the pate with a little bit of the bok choy or whatever the heck she was serving. But she was like, put them all together. And he was like, oh, you're going to tell me how to eat? Don't tell me I know how to eat. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. she's finished. I mean, that's it. She seemed like a very nice lady. She looked like Faith Ford, the actress, uh, specifically Faith Ford on the show Hope and Faith, where Faith Ford didn't play Faith, but instead played Hope Shinowski, and that's who she reminded me of. But she was really good, got all the way to the finale, just, just couldn't pull it out. All right, shifting over to the Midwest, and she was giggling too much. That was her thing. Gordon would be like, why are you giggling? <laughs> She'd be like, I don't know, I'm just nervous. Uh, and Gordon didn't seem to like that. She didn't last very long. Seemed like a good cook, seemed like a nice lady. This guy, Kyle, man, uh, he was one that I was like, this guy's winning everything. He's doing very well. He's he's definitely a challenger and just had that bad cake and that was it. And they didn't do, a lot of times they'll do that thing, which I don't like, where they bring back a lot of the eliminated contestants and they get a chance to come back, but they didn't. And he didn't get to come back. Charles hung around way too long. Charles was undercooking proteins and he was getting lucky, I think with immunity and just with somebody else did worse. Wayne was uh, uh, like a businessman or whatever. He was one of two guys from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Wayne seemed like a, a real threat, got almost to the finale. Uh, it seemed like a very professional dude and uh, really seemed like he was a leader. I mean, just, you know, really like that. And finally, we have Grant. So uh, we were talking about how Grant won with his dessert. His dessert was good, was great, and he had had something great for each one, but not as good as Kennedy for the first two, I felt. And then for that dessert, he did a good dessert, she did a bad dessert. And this is why, when they sent home Nick D. Giovanni, uh, who's now like one of the biggest YouTubers, he's probably the most successful former contender. They sent him home on his season in the finale between the entree and the dessert. And I watched it and I was like, that's just not fair because they're producing a three course thing. They're doing three things that are tying together uh, and Grant was able to make his. Had they sent somebody home after the second course, it might've been Grant. You know, uh, so I, I really, I was so happy when he won. So I mentioned Kennedy said something sweet about him. She was like, he's the nicest guy. He's the most humble, wonderful man. If I have to lose to somebody, I'd like to lose to him. Uh, this guy, he was, he was also waterworks when he won, but also like when he got close to winning, this is a guy, this is a guy who cries a lot. I like this dude a lot. I think Grant was overmatched and came out on top, which I loved. I thought that was a wonderful ending. Uh, I thought it was a great season. I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about it. If you did, be a Fonzie. Give this video a thumbs up, and while you do, go, hey, because it really helps me. It really, really would help me if you did that. Comment below if you had a pick from MasterChef. If you think I got anything wrong, let me know. And right now, there's gonna be a box here and a box over here, and you can choose either box, they're going to take you to some MasterChef content on this channel. And I'll come back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Brand new video. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll see you tomorrow. 2 o'clock. Come back. 2 o'clock. No, not 4. Just 2.